put the priest in front. Let the priestly anointing reach the marketplace before you show up in the marketplace. You deal with the marketplace in your prayer room using the priestly anointing. By the time you land in your office, everything has to line up. Why? Why? My kingdom is not earthly. What causes problems on earth right now is because men came blessed and complete and entered the body and forgot his identity, forgot who he is and focus on the things that touches the body. Hello, this is Pastor Kenny Mukwena. I am Pastor Tepile Mukwena. And it's, it's time, time for, for you to experience, experience the, the blessing. blessing. Welcome to the broadcast. Today we are talking about the tithe, what everyone is currently talking about. Wow, what a message of tithing. I know that is going to change your life and you'll never be the same again. Just open your spirit and allow God to speak over your life don't move from where you are sitting you are about to receive and hear a message that is going to liberate you listen to the message with your heart and allow the holy spirit to minister to you your life will never be the same again enjoy is there anything too difficult for him is there anything too difficult for him scriptures he he had so much revelation than any of the apostles the bible says that after he had an experience with jesus on the road to damascus he was taken to the to, to in a house in, in a street called straight the bible says for three days he could not eat anything and the bible says scales were removed from his eyes 
scales were removed from his eyes, the man could see better now. Hallelujah. He could look at the, he could look at life and see life through the lens of Christ, not through the lens of the flesh. Why? Scales were removed from his eyes. Scales needs to be removed from your eyes if you are going to understand the depth of the word of God. I mean, people that are arguing right now about the tithe. So far, all arguments I've heard is about connection of the scriptures. It's about connecting the scriptures. And one of the biggest arguments is that it's in the Old Testament. It's in the Old Testament. In the Blessed School of Ministry, we talked about it. So, so what if it's in the Old Testament? So what if it's in the Old Testament? Yeah, so what? If it's a, it's a, well, so I don't have to do it. Okay, let's talk about the Ten Commandments. Let's talk about the Ten Commandments. And you see, the Ten Commandments are in the Old Testament. God says, do not take the name of God in vain. Are you allowed to take the name of the Lord in vain? Okay, just show me one law in the Old Testament that you're allowed to do. Let's talk about do not commit murder. Are you allowed to commit murder? No, because you are not under the law, you are under grace. So go around and kill people. Are you allowed to kill people? It's, but it's in the Old Testament. Is it not in the Old Testament? Let me tell you the secret. Let me tell you the secret. Hebrews 10, 16. God says, I will make a new covenant with those people. He talks about the children of Israel. And then he says this. He says, I will put my laws in their hearts. I will write my laws in their minds. What God is saying is, you're no longer going to do things outwardly because when you do things outwardly, the Holy Spirit is not there. He says, I want to relate with you inwardly. He says, no one will need to teach you. No one will need to say, know the Lord because all shall know me. Hallelujah. Why? He has put his spirit in you. He has put his laws in you. Hallelujah. He makes you to know. He makes you to know. He makes you to know. The thing is, listen, listen. Everybody arguing about the tithe, they make it a money argument. And those that are excited about it are the stingy ones. Yeah, they are the stingy ones. You know why? They're looking for an excuse to comfortably not honor God. That's what they are looking for, to comfortable because there is a justification. As a matter of fact, those ones, they were never tithing in the first place. But now they have a reason to say, legally, legally, as if the, the things of God are legalistic. The things of God are spiritual, my brothers. They are spiritual, they are not legal. We don't do things by legalism. That's why God gave us the Holy Spirit. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I want to show you something today. I hope I have time. I hope I have time. Let me just look at the time. Okay, I've, I've got enough time to establish this. Let's go to, let's go to Colossians chapter 1. I want to show you something here. And I want to show you a mystery. Let me make a disclaimer. Let me make a disclaimer. This message is for the one who wants to hear it. I'm going to say that again. This message is for the one who wants to hear it. If it gets too hard, we'll forgive you, but please come back next week for part two. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's disclaimer number one. That's disclaimer number one. Do you want disclaimer number two? You are not ready for disclaimer number two, so you will deal with it as it comes. Hallelujah. Colossians 1, verse 15. Um, if possible, if you can give me, move away from my slide and go. Are you able to read it? Is it big enough? Elevo <laughs> can see it. You can look there, Elevo. Put glasses. You have your glasses. To read there. All right. Let me read this. I want to show you something very important here. Something very important because this introduces you the origin of the tithe, the reason behind the tithe, the understanding of the tithe. You understand this, your life will never be the same again. I argue well. I'm not here to argue with you. I'm not here to convince you. I'm here to show you something you may not know. And I leave it to you to make the judgment. Hallelujah. And I pray by the Spirit of God that you may listen to this message with your spirit, not with your mind. Hallelujah. We are ascending to a higher level. Say higher level. I'm taking you to a level above the arguments we have had so far. And show you something you may never, you may, you, you may not have seen before. 
The Bible says he is the image of the exact, he is the exact living image, the essential manifestation of the unseen God, the visible representation of the invisible. And then it says the firstborn. Underline the firstborn. Underline the firstborn. He says the, the preeminent one, the superior one, the sovereign one, hallelujah, and the originator of all creation. Who are we talking about here? Who are we talking about here? So we can up to here, we can establish that Jesus is the firstborn, hallelujah. Is this not in the New Testament? Let me tell you something else about the, the Old Testament. For those of you who don't know what the Old Testament is, as a matter of fact, many of you, the division of the Bible has caused a lot of confusion to you. Because it has told you what is Old Testament and what is New. And you have got stuck to what someone said old. The Old Testament starts from Exodus chapter 20. Not before. Exodus chapter 20. Up to Deuteronomy 33. That is the Old Testament. That's where we find the covenant that God made at Mount Sinai. It was only after in Mount Sinai that God gave the laws. But before Exodus 19, we see the firstborn everywhere. And I'm going to show you where the tithe is and what is the significance of the tithe in those areas. You understand? So that you change your mind and not allow yourself to reason the things of God with logic and get confused about what is Old Testament. Listen, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The Old Testament speaks about the New Testament, but it is hidden. Jesus is hidden in pictures, in shadows, and in symbols. Jesus is everywhere in scriptures. In the book of John chapter 5, verse 46, Jesus says that Moses wrote about me. He says Moses wrote about him. He, Jesus says, you search the scriptures because you think in them you will have eternal life. He says, these very same scriptures speaks of me, but you're not willing to come to me in order that you may be saved. He was talking about the law. He was talking about the Torah. Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? You must understand, the law of Moses starts in Exodus 20. When the children of Israel got out of Egypt, they did not get out of Egypt until they make it to Mount Sinai by the covenant of the law. It was the covenant that God made with Abraham. It was that covenant that God sent Moses to go and take them out of the children of Israel. Do you understand? So settle yourself. And the New Testament does not start in the book of Matthew. It doesn't start in the book of Matthew. The Bible tells us that a testament is only in force when the testator has died. Not while he's still alive. So when we talk about the testament, we're talking about a will, we're talking about a covenant. And it cannot be in force until the one who has written it has, has died. The thing that Jesus, a lot of what Jesus said, he was talking to people who were, who were under the law. It was a manifestation and a display of his grace, but he was talking to people who were under the law. So don't look at everything that Jesus Christ said, and you call it New Testament. If that was so, you know what? Jesus said, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Let me see the stamp of the one who has cut his hand because it causes them to sin. That was the law. But Jesus said it in the Gospels. So it's not everything. You need revelation to understand these things. You need to know who was Jesus speaking to. What was the purpose of what he was saying? And be able to diagnose it by the Spirit of God. You need revelation. That is why the, the Apostle Paul prayed to the church in, 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 the book, in, 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 in Ephesus. That God will give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. He says, I don't stop praying for you. That God will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. You need to relate with God by revelation, not just by what you read. Not by what you read. As a matter of fact, you can take a New Testament scripture and make it an Old Testament reality. When you look at it and it creates an obligation on you. Anything that you do without the spirit of God is religion. It's tradition. It's outward. It's not inward. That is why Romans 8 verse 9 says, whoever does not have the spirit of God says it's not of God. It says if, if you do not have the spirit of God, you are not a Christian. You are not born again. You are not his. You are a religious person. You need the spirit of God for revelation. Hallelujah. Gives you understanding. That is why 1 Corinthians 2.12 says, we have received 
not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us by God. Who make us know the things that are freely given to us by God? We have received, not the worldly spirit. What is the worldly spirit? It is the spirit of greed. It is the spirit of lust. It is the spirit of pride. It is the spirit of selfishness. That is why if you do not understand the importance of a right relationship with money, you will find yourself saving money and you think you are saving God. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 24, you cannot. He doesn't say you may not. He says you cannot save God and money. So tell me, tell me, what kind of discipline do you have as a believer to ensure you don't save money because God has made that to be your responsibility. It's not God's responsibility that you save him. It's a choice. He leaves it to you that you do not save money. And it is by revelation that you know how to honor God because there is a way that pleases God about honor. So if you ignore how God desires honor, you may find yourself that in this regarding what God desires as his honor, you are honoring the devil. I'm not going to repeat that. Someone decide got it. Someone decide got it. Let's read further. So, uh, verse, verse 16, it says, For by him, who's that? For by him, all things were created in heaven and on earth. Things visible and things invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, he says, all things were created and exist through him. That is, by his activity and for him. When it says by his activity, it means by his design and by his order. Everything exists. If the master will say, your day is done, you are done. It's by his order. Hallelujah. And he has also lived, lived, left it on you to rule by decree. Hallelujah. Verse 17, it says, and he himself existed and is before all things and then it says and in him all things hold together all things hold together he's the one that holds you together he's the one that holds your marriage together your family together your finances together if there is anything in your life that is holding it's because he's the one that holds it together he says he, he says together he's he it says he is, is the controlling. Underline that the controlling. Because the power is that of control. I will show you elsewhere before we knock off. Before we knock off. <laughs> because I feel like a teacher this morning. I'm in class. He is, is controlling cohesive force of the universe. He's his. 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 Hallelujah. He holds everything together. He holds the controlling power, but the devil also wants the controlling power. And guess what? Whoever controls your life, you allow yourself to be controlled. The power is for control. Let me submit to you even before I go further. The tithe is for control. I'll show you. Don't worry. I'll show you. The tithe is for control. I will show you where God himself spoke. Tithe is for control. People don't know that tithe is for control. If you cannot place your life to him, guess what? Let's talk about your life. If you cannot place your life in him, the devil controls it whether you want it or not. If you cannot place your finances under him, the devil controls it whether you want it or not. God has given you free will. You decide who must control your life. You decide who control your finances. You understand? If you do not place your finances to him, listen, listen. Many, the wrong teaching about the tithe is for those who try to give the tithe so that they can be blessed. No. That does not represent Christ. No, the blessing comes from Christ. But when he has blessed you, you don't wander off and try to do your own thing. That is why even in the Garden of Eden, there was a tree there. That tree has got a number 10 in it because the Bible says it is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What does Romans, um, um, what does Romans 3, I think it's Romans 3, 29, if I'm not mistaken, it says by the law is the knowledge of sin. Which law is that? The Ten Commandments. So God puts a tree in the garden and says to Adam, don't eat that tree. Don't eat that tree. And it had number 10 in it. It says, don't eat that tree. But the number 10 is concealed. 
you must, you must, you must see number 10. By revelation, you understand? He says, you commit your life to me by not eating that tree. You also have a number 10 in your finances. Hallelujah. You must see it by revelation. You don't have to see it by the law. I don't have to tell you about it. If you are a child of God and you desire to honor God, you desire to honor God, that number 10 is there. Hallelujah. To Adam he says, don't eat this tree. Don't eat this tree. And that was not the law. No. That is the law of God. Because the laws of God are not bad. They're not bad. I just ask you about the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments the man says, do not steal. Tell me if you are allowed to steal. If you are allowed to steal, oh, we can agree. We can agree to say, okay, wherever God says, I have disregarded the law. Listen, when God says, I disregard the law, he was saying, don't relate with me outwardly. Don't relate with me from a sense of duty. He says, I will put in your heart what I want from you and how I want to relate with you. That is the Holy Spirit. He's the key. Hallelujah. Let's move on. Let's move on quickly and finish that. Go to the... So, yeah, yeah verse 18 says, He is also the head, the source and leader of the body. That's the church. He says he's the source. So he, he sees, we see him as the what? The source. He is the beginning. We started there, remember. He's the first of all things. He's the beginning. Does he begin in your life? Does he begin in your life? Listen, every time you get an income, every time, that marks the beginning of a new cycle. A new cycle does not begin when you, when, when, when you, when you are toiling. No. A new cycle begins when you receive your income. You determine that the cycle starts now. I'll show you in scripture. That's why I've designated two parts for this message. Hallelujah. So he says he's also the head, the life source and leader of the body, the church. And he is the beginning. He says the firstborn from the dead. Underline the firstborn. He's saying that for the second time. Do you see that? He says the firstborn. Because listen, the tithe originates from the firstborn. And I'll show you clearly today that the tithe originates from the firstborn. He says, so that he himself will occupy the first place. Does he have first place in your life? Do you wake up in the morning and recognize? That's why every morning I send you a devotion trying to encourage you. Make him first. Some of you ignore the devotion and go to work and find trouble. You wonder. You started wrong. How do you start a day? How do you start a day? Even God says in the beginning. In the beginning is Christ. How do you start a day? How do you start a day? How do you start a day? You're going on holiday. No wonder. You get there and you find that the room you booked is not the way it looks on the internet. Mm, how do you start your life? Because he's first. He holds superiority. You must invoke him. You take a journey. You are traveling. Where do you, who do you start the journey with? Hey, God, when he spoke the first time in the Bible, what did he say? What did he say? What did he say, Pastor? What did God say? His first words. What did God say? Let there be light. Who is light? He says, I am the light of the world. For as long as I'm in this world, I am the light of the world. And he qualified it. He said, for as long as I'm in this world, I am the light of the world. But he turned it around and says, you are the light of the world. So when God spoke first, he said, let there be Jesus. Before creation was made, he said, let there be Jesus. This is what he's saying in your life. In your finances, let there be Jesus. Jesus will not come in your finances because you said, Lord, um, I, I, I invite you into my finances. And then you go and wander off and spend it as a selfish and greedy person. As a prideful person. You have committed your finances by words. You know what it says? These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. What is he talking about? What is he talking about? Because you think you can just come and lift up holy hands and then walk out of here and live the lifestyle of the devil because the lifestyle of the devil is pride, is selfishness, is lust, is greed. The things of God start by the vertical beam, not the horizontal beam. 
Now some of you feel fulfilled when we have given to the poor. That's the horizontal beam. The horizontal beam cannot stand without the vertical beam. And that's the cross of Christ. Everything must hang on that vertical beam. It's God first. Some of you have so much trouble in your businesses. You wonder why? Why are things so hard? Let's check who is first. Because that's what the tithe is all about. Hallelujah. Even God himself, he recognizes the son as first. I hope this message has blessed you deeply today. But before we close the broadcast, I just want to give you an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. If you want to be saved today, just make this prayer with me, believing in your heart that when Jesus died on the cross, he died for you. So make this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for me on the cross. Today, I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen and amen. If you made that prayer, you are born again. You are my brother. You are my sister. I will see you in heaven. God bless. Why do we tithe? We tithe to appreciate that we live in this house that we live by the grace of God. We have these cars that we have by the grace of God. We have food to eat by the grace of God. We have clothes to wear by the grace of God. It is the grace of God that protects us. It is the grace of God that puts a shield around us. It is the grace of God that causes us to do what we do. It is the grace of God. He says your children must know that. That is why they says when your sons ask you. It means your sons must see you. Your tithe is a public proclamation. I know you say you want to do your tithe in secret. Show me in the scriptures where it says do your tithe in secret. No. No. You know why you don't want us to know your tithe? Because we are proud. You, we will know that you earn 10,000 rand. And you look like you earn 20. So you don't want us to know. No, it's not secret. Your sons must know. Your children must know. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, I want to ask you to pray about becoming a partner with us. We are a ministry that wins souls. Our primary focus is to win souls. We impact communities. We go to the streets. We win souls one on one. We go door to door. We preach the gospel in every platform where God gives us an opportunity. And for us to remain on the channel that you are watching, we need your partnership. Nothing too small, nothing too big. Whatever God put in your heart, partner with us using the information on your screen. Send us specifically your email address and your names and we will send you our partnership package which include my two books titled Unveiling Jesus in the Tithe as well as Understanding Covenant and Inheritance. I want to assure you that when you partner with us, we will pray for you every day. We will make sure that you have access to our resources, our material and everything that we can do to make you comfortable in your partnership. So we want you to be a partner with this ministry. And I know without a doubt that you and I will do great things before Jesus Christ return. And not only that, we will receive an eternal reward. I look forward to your partnership. God bless.